everybody, this is Boss Barrel Radio, and we're here to talk about music. I'm Griffin Hoffman, and with me is Gene Sever Jr. Hi. And Colin Connett. Hello. Tonight's topic <laughs> ba -boom, ba -ba 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 -boom, is remixes. Remixes. Or reimaginings, or, re or covers, or. or Basically, what reinterpretations. Reinterpretations. Interpretations. Basically, interpretations. something that blossomed from the original creation. Yeah, game music is cool, yeah, and then people do... Far, right? This is basically the fan art of game music. Oh, totes. Yeah. My goats. So basically, either fan-created, either evolution through the series of the type of game, or something that was just created from the original content idea, which you'll see some very... Uh, very colorful ones in this adventure. For sure. And like always, we have no rhyme or reason to our ordering scale or methodology Mac. on this. And we have our guest appearance by our, by the cat Mac. Yeah. Mac, your favorite? Say hello, Mac. Meow. That was Mac. That was, yes. Oh, his favorite is butthole. Oh my God. That was like a straight up. That was a nice butthole. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, stand and take your hats off. Mac has now bent over to show you the full Monty. Mm hmm. He gave us the goat. When do we listen to music? Ah, uh, never. Are we just going to talk about weird shit for... Can we turn the furnace back on? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no. That's with a premium subscription. Ah, uh, of course. <clears throat> so, yes. Now it's about the time that we would listen to some music. Grip, I kind of want you to go first, because if you're going with your number one pick, that is amazing, or you save that for like... Do I? Do you want me to set the tone with that? I think so, right? Yeah, Let's I, get I think the, that's fun, a very happy... the funnies out of the way. Yeah, there you go. Because There's then... a lot of context involved in this one. No, no, just... Well, I guess we should hear the history of it. Because I know <laughs> somewhere deep down in my heart I still love you. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. A beautiful song. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, um, this Ooh. is the first on my list only because oh, of uh, uh, how, how, how funny. I mean, so we're setting the tone here for these are remixes of, of video game music, but they're not necessarily a just reinterpretation of an existing song into a different format. In fact, it's a totally different fucking twist on everything. This is a celebration of Rainbow Road. This is a celebration of Rainbow Road. <laughs> and this is... Uh, okay, so this is actually stemming from the meme called Best Cry Ever. And this song is called Best Rainbow Road Ever. Uh, I still love you. <laughs> with no, with no real, no real author credited. Um, the the current YouTube purveyor of it is that man needs an award. Burf. So, I mean, if if that deserves uh, a look up, that's fine. What I would like to talk about, though, however, is that song is delightful because it's basically just Rainbow Road. T-Pain T style put through some vocoders of this poor man's cry. And I would like to tell you a little bit about Rick Rocky Lockridge. Wait, wait is, that, is that the guy that the cried? Man in is the that video. the cry guy? Is that the cry guy that or the guy the that's saying guy. I still love you? That is the cry guy. Okay. The I still love you guy is Lamar Lockridge, his son. Okay. 
Rick Lockridge. He was a boxer that lived in the 60s to almost present. Um, and he was known for having uh, defeated uh, Roger Mayweather, giving him his really? first defeat. Yep. He was a professional boxer. Damn. And this this... This joke, this gimmick, came from the the A and E TV show called Intervention. Uh, Rocky was a twenty year old, uh, twenty years long drug abuser uh, who abandoned his family and struggled with a lot of issues. Um, and then on the television show, there was that confrontation moment where he did, you know, express his love for his family and his family for him, uh, which then turned into. The best cry ever. And this me. is where Shigeru Miyamoto got the inspiration for Rainbow Road. Exactly. Yeah. You oh fall off God. the road. You're exactly. a horrible, horrible human being. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the man has passed away uh, oh, in no. 2019 uh, through a lot of trauma uh, and 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 wherewithal. Uh, I am kind of afraid to ask the circumstances. Uh, I, I, you can look up Rocky, uh, Lockweather, nope, uh, Lockridge on the internet and, uh, look up his entire history. But the man was a, he, he was a prolific boxer. Um, and this bit comes from a shitty internet television show that was then twisted into a meme to fit around, uh, the Rainbow Road song in, um, Mario Kart. Which Mario Kart? I don't know, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that's an incredibly, incredibly like dark origin to where you, you, you think of the situation they created, that cry, where it comes from a very heartfelt place. Absolutely. To be turned into something so playful, hilarious, and I'm not sure if demeaning is the correct word, but it's pretty close. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. It is... It's not just, but if it means somebody's going to go look up Rocky Lockridge and learn about what this man's life was and his family, more the better for it. It's a cool situation that this has reached internet fandom for better or for worse. And the song is funny and it makes everybody <laughs> laugh. It's, it's, but it's also a human that was behind here who had a profound history and he actually did some fucking cool ass shit. So uh, go check it out. That makes sense. Enjoy the song. Laugh and feel like a terrible human being. But remember him. After I told you what it actually means. <laughs> I think they're kill boys. Kill boys. No, it, that's, <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Even? Buzz kills whatever. But no, that, that is fantastic to know that this man. Oh, no. Kill boys uh, was my next song. Uh, Ooh, spoilers. That's I never knew that he fought a Mayweather. And that's that's cool. First victory. I mean, well, I mean, every, I mean, I'll be honest. Everybody's heard that meme. Everybody's laughed at that horrible ah, yeah, that that whole thing. But to hear a fantastic rendition of the Rainbow Road song and then learn about the man, that's cool. Yeah. So what do we listen to next? That is not going to be so fucking emotionally devastating. Well, um, pretty much everything I chose is from Castlevania. Mm -hmm. Colin, your stuff's all over. What would you like to do, Colin? Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? You know what? Dude? I don't. I'll go first. Yes, let's do it. Call Actually, on. second, sir. What's next? Let's kick it off with some hardcore shit. Oh, okay. no. Let's do some Doom, dude. Oh, yeah, You ready baby. for some Doom? I'm um, sorry. Always. That, that movie was great. I'd like to say... Mm, mm. <laughs> yep. Carl Urban? Mm. I'd like yeah, to say this is a, a metal cover, but, it's, you know, Doom's always kind of metal, so just a regular cover. Do you... That's a good um, point. The track Kitchen Ace. I don't know why it's called Kitchen Ace, but it sure is. Is this 2016 Doom? No, or this is Doom? the Doom 95. Okay. This cool, is cool, cool. OG Doom. So is this the actual mm -hmm. song that we're listening to from Doom, or is this like something? No, this is the cover. You don't, yeah. you don't really need to, to hear so who did the, the original for context. All right, we'll listen to it, and we'll come back in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Shut up. <laughs> hey, Pantera's great. Yeah, they are. Everyone's heard that song. The Pantatonics. But that's, uh... That's a bit different. It's a pretty good cover. Yeah, man. That's so I enjoy my metal. So who's the person who actually did the cover? Oh, who the fuck knows? Some guy on YouTube. I can find out for you. I, yeah, that please look great. it up. That was really good. The dude uh, looked like a very accomplished guitarist and bassist. Yeah. What Griff actually means is he looks like one hell of a hipster. Matt? Yeah. Matt Pula. Excellent. Good gentleman. job. Matt Pula, good interpretation. I enjoyed it. Um, and Gene, you were talking off air about how you like it being in the forefront. Yeah, it's it's that that song. It's I was thinking like listening to just the the remaster, remix, or, or re envision, whatever this was, or what you would call it. It's like I was like, man, this is a cool cool track, cool guitar, cool riff. Why don't I? Why doesn't like something come to mind immediately from Doom? And then I was like, wait a minute. Now I remember. This is the track playing in the background of every time I'm trying to find that last fucking secret. Dude, Doom's got a lot of cool tracks, a lot of cool music, and they do. And a- you're, all, you're always hearing it, but you're not listening to it. Exactly. Always, yeah, it's always in the background when you're either killing a bunch of crazy shit or you're trying to find one last fucking thing to get that hundred percent secret. Right. It's like the soundscape of Metroid, where you're like, oh, this music is like twinkling and 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 making some atmospheric noises in it, but. It's just fucking slang ass demon noises of death metal that's happening nonstop in Doom. Absolutely, You're right. yeah. Gene, ready to uh, All right. throw it out there. I am in no specific order. So we're gonna uh, let's act. I hang on, everybody. Grab your chairs. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure my list is actually in the correct order. What is it in the correct format? It is. Mm. Well, it's in inverse format, so you need to hit A first rather than one, because A is the original. Ugh. So the first song that I'd like to start with is Simon's Theme. It first originated in Super Castlevania 4, and it's it's great. And, and pretty much every song I'm going to go through tonight is going to be within the Castlevania game sake and their, chrono- and their their types of games and that whole thing, because I think that series does a fantastic idea of going through and reintroducing their songs later but changing them and remastering them. So I'd like to play a little bit of the original and then play the Castlevania Bloodlines version of Simon Theme to really enjoy that. So if you want to click it, go for it. Yep, coming right up. So that is Simon's theme. That is stage one music and the Super Castlevania for the SNES. And that is like a real like tone setter. You you are Simon. You are the send of the Belmonts. You're going to go in there and whoop some ass. So it's got that really strong organ and upbeat tone. So it's 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 a cool voice because you start right at the beginning. You're killing everything in like two hits and you're flying through the game. So it really sets the tone. And what I think they did a great job with the remix, which appears in Castlevania Bloodlines, this basically unheard of Castlevania one or series that takes place in it was released on the Sega Genesis takes place in during like World War One or two it's just a weird game but it's World like, War One or two really I think it's World War One huh because you're going through various places in Europe like you're fighting around the, the leaning tower of Pisa you're going to Germany and fighting a weapons factory and so on and so forth hmm. but Simon Simon's theme comes up again on stage eight towards the prelude to the last boss and I'm trying to find the composer of Simon's theme. I think it's the Miriaka, but I can't. Or what's her name? I'm, trying, I'm going nuts trying to find it right now. Hmm. It's okay. You can put a put a pin in it. We'll put it in the credits. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah, this is the actual remix of that particular song that appears in Castlevania Bloodlines, which was released three years later. All right. So we're going to check that one out. Meow. So good. <laughs>
absolutely love. That is probably, even with like, you know, the fan favorites and fan remixes of Simon's theme, that is probably my absolute favorite rendition of that particular song. That was really cool. It also sounded, it didn't sound like an orchestra was playing it, so that's why I was surprised. Well, it's because it was in a game. Nice. It's, well, I mean, obviously you can have orchestras, music, and games, but it was also released. I mean, Castlevania Bloods came out in 1994. Mm. And that particular song, it does a great job where that's that's like the final fight lead up music. Sure. Like that song starts playing when you're going up this like ridiculously long staircase and the moon turns blood red in the background. And it's like, oh, this is go time. I'm, I'm not fucking around. I fought all this ridiculous crap this to get here. This is some real shit. And it's it's so good. Like, I absolutely adore that particular song. Nice. It was really good. I like that quite a bit. And the remix... Um, it sounded like a remix that was like a remaster on another game, um, much like what this entire show should have been, which is Gangplank Galleon uh, over and over and over and over, <laughs> and over and over again and over and over and over again. The best remix in a game of another game song. Fair enough. But I mean, that's fine. That's fine that you brought this little guy out hot to trot. Oh, no, it was very good, Gene. Thank you. I appreciate it now that my dream has been smashed. But yeah. no, it's, it's, I was actually surprised to, to find out that Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania 4 came out before Castlevania Bloodlines. And the Simon's theme originated on the uh, Castlevania or Super Castlevania Four, which is a great game in sin. Mm. It was very good. Well, I guess the Simon's theme might have no, no. It was Castlevania Four because I'm thinking of Simon's Quest, mm. which apparently that's not where it originated. Interesting. Which was Castlevania Two. I hated Simon's Quest. Same. I, I liked it. All right, Colin, you ready to show off your guy? Not you. No me. Me no. No me. I'll go. Go. Do it. Do it. Do Link's it. Awakening. Do it. Telltale Heights on the violin. I'm a sucker for a violin. What's Link's Awakening? I wish Awakening? I could play the violin. Shut up, Jane. Uh, Link's Awakening was the Zelda title for the Game Boy. The original Game Boy. Sounds terrible. It was a really great game. Hmm. And then they remade it for the Switch, and it was also a great game. But uh, yeah, violins are great. Bought it They're one of my favorite instruments, if not my favorite instrument. And uh, yeah. I'd like to revisit this. Okay. Favorite instrument. Yeah. I'm kind of stunned as well. What? Okay. The so violin? No, that's your favorite instrument. Oh, I would love to be able to play the violin. And we're going to play the original song first. This one, I don't think that's really necessary. We're going to play the original song first. Okay, perfect. We're playing the original song first. Oh, I hope that when you look up the original, it's Rick Rolled. So that's that's one of my favorite tracks from A Link's Awakening, anyway. So that's the original, but right? That's the original. Did so you, get ready for this shiz. Did you play the uh, the remake this year or last yeah. year? What'd you think? Oh, I thought it was awesome. Nice. I thought it was fantastic. So now we're gonna get a reinterpretation of it, a remixture of it. Correct. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dude's a baller. Some so, good violin. That is so the vi- the video Fury XX violin doesn't have a name. Oh, that's yeah. good. The beauty is it's one dude doing two violin. Well, yeah, I'm sure I'm assuming he splice. He has to splice it together, but it's he's doing that all himself, and right. that's fantastic. That yeah. is that's very interesting to to see that reimagining or re not not reimagining, but like his his rendition of it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's really good. Yeah, that was very good, and also. Violin is very good. Violin is very good. I could never imagine playing it because it's like, maybe it actually would be an instrument for me because there's like gray area of like the string is not as noshed out as like a classic guitar. Mm -hmm. So you have wiggle room for it, but Mm -hmm. it's also like terrifying. (laughs) Yeah, dude. And also, fuck the viola. Oh, fuck fuck that viola. viola. Dang, that's kind of rude. You know what I'm saying? People live and die by the violins. Cello. Gene wants to play the vibraphone. Oh. I play that with my ass. Okay. That's exciting. All right. Next. Griff. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I, I'm i going to play a song that's also from the legend of the Zelda. Oh, not from the ass vibraphone, though. Uh, no. I okay. Mean, yeah. Maybe. You guys hate. You so. Don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't understand ass vibraphone for sure. Um, but what I do understand is Gerudo Valley is one of the best <laughs> uh, songs from the Zelda franchise. And if you haven't heard it, please go listen to any fucking variant of it forever. Because like every Zelda song, there's a gajillion different times it's been ever uh, not remastered, not remixed, but just... It exists in a different Zelda game. So there's no point. A thousand different instruments done by a thousand different people. Over a thousand different years. Yes. Exactly. It's great. It is wonderful. And what I love so much is this group um, of a bunch of apparently jazz band enthusiasts. Nerds! Nerds. Uh, I think I know which video this is. It's a great video. video. This is very good. It is very good. Right. So we're going to play it. And I love it. Is this section just us coming up with stuff and Griff sharing stuff he already likes? One, two, one, two, Welcome to a bunch of college students playing a Nintendo game on the college campus that sounds baller as shit, and I love every second of it. It's so good. Uh, this is uh, the, from the YouTube channel Kyle Atha, Athide, Athade, A-T-H-A-Y-D-E, um, and it's he has several songs, or this person has several songs, uh, with what looks like a large scale jazz band uh, playing uh, some video game songs uh, in a swing jazz methodology, and it is fucking wonderful. Especially because you take Druda Valley, which great already, you're out there. You can play this on anything, and now you take <laughs> it and you do a little swing jazz on it, uh, and I love it. Uh, when it, it, it hits that mark and it's like the, it takes the jazz version of the beat drop happens and now we're, now we're playing. 
Well, that's that's what's fantastic. I, I think my favorite part about this is that you have that good jazz tone throughout, but then it like escalates and it accelerates where it's like you normally don't see that in a jazz song or hear that in a jazz song. And I'm like, man, that's great. All right. Not your typical classic. It's not just a reinterpretation of Druda Valley in a jazz format. It's people playing Druda Valley song and then injecting like you know, improvisation into it in a jazz beat. So I love this. Uh, this this Kyle Ath- Athlade uh, does an amazing job with a bunch of other uh, um, video game musics. I wish he did or they did more, um, but highly encouraged. And Druda Valley. Oh, oh, we could listen to Druda Valley remixes all the time. I I, hes- I I didn't put the one on here that was the people like in Times Square playing on drums. Uh-huh. Druda Valley. You'll get served that up. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So who's up next and what are we doing? Yo. So the next song that I'm picking, also from Castlevania, that's going to be a running theme, mm. is a song that has two different names. It's more commonly known as Dance of the Pales from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I believe it's a waltz. But it's a very, like, I imagine this taking place on, like, a masquerade ball where everybody's, you know, having masks on and some really crazy, less, I guess not as crazy as Eyes Wide Shut, but that kind of environment where it's Uh. like, this is very sophisticated. These are very aristocratical individuals. This is just that kind of environment. And I really enjoy this song. So let's play the originally an idea of how the re envisioning that I'm going to play afterwards is. Dance of the Pales, otherwise known as Waltz of the Pearls, that is done by Michiru Yamane. The remix, remaster, re-envisioning is done by a YouTuber who does pretty much every... Oh, Ninja. Ninja. Ah, uh, Ninja. Ninja. Oh, that guy. I just already thought we were yelling Ninja. Not. not <clears throat> I not. thought that was cool until I realized you were talking about that no, shit. No, not. yeah, Ninja. He's, he's coming on tonight to remix... Get out of here. Just that stop. Wonderful just, walls. We're moving on. So We the, don't like ninja around here. The YouTuber is Laura6683. Oh, hell yeah. She is a... Uh, She's pin- very good. Wait, question. Did you guys know of her before I messaged you the video of her playing all the music? I learned of her from Gene a I've while ago. I've been okay. listening to her for some time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just I, curious. I stumbled on her because... I don't I, I don't remember what the hell I stumbled on her. Or was that... No, I, it was over a year ago because she did the the... Through the Fire and Flames on the, on the piano. Okay. Anyways. Interesting. It's Laura6683 is her YouTube handle. She does pretty much every video game music cover you could think of, and they're fantastic. She's a very inter- interesting individual because she's also got synesthesia, so she sees the music ah, she plays, which so makes cool. it kind of weird where you watch her play the music and look at those reactions, but... Without further ado, uh, Dance of the Pales by Laura. Before you go into that, too, I, I'll mm-hmm. say that like one of the really cool things about her is, one, personality-wise, she's fantastic to listen oh, to. Oh, very pleasant. But just as a visual, like she is playing this music. Usually, she'll listen to a bit of it and then go play her interpretation of it. You might have actually introduced us to it, because I feel like you're the one that shared the Through the Fires and Flames, because yeah. it's like she listens to it for a second and then starts playing it. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. So it's it's a great visual, too, because you'll see her also dress up in the theme of the music she's yeah, playing. Yeah, like, yeah. her Final Fantasy block is her dressed up in various, like, nerdy attire. 
for the Castlevania block. She's looking very gothic in that stuff. But, but also to that end, it's not like a, a nasty thing. Oh, like, no, no, not creeper that way. She is. She's this a This is safe for work. Thank you, Griff. I appreciate yeah, it. Safe man. For yeah. Anyways, Dance of the Pails. And I will start with Dance of Pails because I've noticed um, it's been up there and it seems to be a pretty popular one. Six six eight three. Six six eight three. Very pleasant. It's. I think it's great. I feel like that's a, a very piano heavy song, and I think she does it very well. And piano pianist. She is a pianist. Yeah, she's that very good with a T on the end. Yeah. So yeah, she does. I mean, I would absolutely recommend her channel, her music to anybody because she covers basically every game. I was kind of curious if I could find a song that I've ever played, enjoy, or not song, but game that I've ever played, enjoy that she didn't do and. I haven't had any luck so far. I mean, she did the entire Secret of Mana soundtrack, too. So. Right. It's all piano-based, too. Yes, it's just her and the piano. Yep. I guess she does do some violin, huh. but I didn't explore any of that. Huh. Interesting. Cool. Well, that was very good. Um, I think I liked it as the piano version better. I did, too. I feel like the the original is is great for the context of a game music in the background where it's not front and center. And it creates that kind of vibe, but I feel like the piano is more of that's what you would expect at an actual like gala waltz uh-huh. dance. Uh-huh. All Castlevania music works better on the piano, anyway, in my opinion, from what I've heard. Obviously, blood just, tears. I think there's a split. I think it's it's like you there's a Venn diagram of good piano or good butt ass motherfucking rock, right? <laughs> like I one agree. needs to be full on Castlevania, and one could be like reinterpreted into like okay. this delightful piano rendition. Yeah, I'll... and there's the, the there's there's a middle ground between the two of them, but it's like, eh, you, you're not going to have like the crazy frog of Castle, there's some strong swings where it's like this is fantastic on piano, this is fantastic on guitar, a la Dance of the Pales and Bloody Tears. Mm-hmm. That's the Venn diagram. All right, Colin, what's up next? Let's do some Earthbound, dude. Oh, no. There's oh, Earthbound? no. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you already know it's going to be weird. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, um, Here, here's so, my Earthbound impression. Bravo, 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 I'm so... How was that? Right, that was pretty Perfect. close. That was good. Right on the Actually, spot. Actually, we don't even need to play anything now. All right. Okay, great. Okay, Disco. No, we're going to play it anyway. So... <laughs> Uh, this is the I still love you coffee break where you kind of take a moment from your adventure to oh, okay. reflect back on what you've done and uh, you okay. know as one does and so let's listen to the original first for the smidge what constitutes a smidge we'll find out find out today
That's a little gist of what you're about to be getting. That's a mood music there. I like that. That was yeah. nice. I feel like you, you're listening to that. Where, when does that happen? It happens at a couple different points during the game. Okay. Again, just kind of like when there's a little break from the adventure. So it's not like you're calling your dad music or you're no. sleeping at the no. end music. <laughs> like, this is... What? Well, I mean, you... Are you okay, G? Jane, have you ever played Earthbound? You, play, you call your dad a lot. You call your dad in Earthbound. <laughs> he gives you money. Yeah. Like, all good. No? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. I, I'm glad that was timed perfectly when I took a sip of my uh, water. Do you call your dad for different reasons? I just call my dad for money also. So and to I, save, I call my dad to save. Don't judge me. It's I fair. Call, yeah. I mean, I, he has to know what I'm doing. Well, <laughs> I suppose. That makes the most sense, right? You call the person older than you so they remember what you're doing. So if you die, they remember it. Not the inverse. I don't see anything Sure, like that, that yeah, makes perfect totally. sense, right? Yeah. So what's this remaster, remix, revisioning? So this is some, like, talking? electronic, kind of lo-fi. Just play it. It's weird, and I love it. Okay. All right, so it's a re-envisioned weird. a crunchy tune man yeah maybe you're say that maybe is. you're token on some dank with the boys dude oh absolutely man. not say that's crunchy that's very smooth <laughs> wait this is here's here's my interpretation of this song <laughs> well that was actually the next part okay yeah no that was that was it was really good it was like very good pink floyd inspired i'm shape. glad i'm glad everyone enjoyed that because oh. I thought that was fucking cool. No, it's funny. I, I it's I immediately thought of a couple other channels that I listen to that are like mellow techno reinterpretations of the things. ASMR. It's very good. No, not ASMR necessarily, but like just like it, it aligns a lot with like the cool beats and chill. If you guys are familiar with that. Nope. No. Um. <laughs> so there's a there's a YouTube uh, presence of like X beats and chill, and it's like. Um, 10 hours of uh, uh, Animal Crossing music that's just like chill music. It's like ambient kind of stuff that you huh. would listen while you're writing a paper in college or while you're, you know, doing your data, you're reading a book or studying. When you're rolling the fattest of dang. Or right. when you're, when you're, Huff and the Duff. <laughs> you're smoking the devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce, dude. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a very uh. calming, very relaxing. I would imagine listening to that song at a point when I'm just relaxing. Either I'm reading a book or I'm pa I'm getting yeah. ready to go to sleep. Very calming. Very, very calming. Right. I like both of them, actually, too, very much. Like both, They're both good. The yeah. original's very good. Yeah. I love the... It's very nice. Both very sides. nice. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Gene, you look like you're jonesing for another song to get on the board. Are you ready to go? Or do you want me to go? No, I, I mean, I'm all, I, I've got a ton of songs, so I'm always ready to go. I, just, I was it. just looking at my list. Okay. All right, we'll continue with the theme of Castlevania. The next one is going to be number 4A on my list. This is the Treasure Room in, Su Treasure Room? Treasure Room in Super Castlevania 4. 
It's got this really kind of funky tune to it. And I made sure I tried to get the most authentic, original... This like, is the dankest of dank vibes for this treasure room? You are talking, Ultra brother. dank. But this is not remastered. This is like the original, original song from the game. And it's it's neat. It's It's kind of weird and neat. So I think it fits in well. So that's the original. The The stage is you're in a giant treasure room, jumping on treasure chests, jumping on gold, and getting towards the end to fight this gold bat thing. The song itself kind of jumps from a couple of different directions. So it's it's very... It's one of those songs where you play the stage, like, yeah, this is kind of a lame song, but then you listen to it by itself, you're like, it's... No, this is uh, kind of catchy. And the composer of that, I believe, is Masanori Adachi and Taro Kudo. Now, the remix is done by Overclocked Remixes. The actual person who created this is Timaeus222. And the reason I really wanted you to listen to the original on this is because this is a reimagining. This is a completely different song based off of this source material. So, Do we want to take a quick pause here and talk about what OC Remix is? Absolutely. Would you like to pitch into that? Fuck yeah, because <laughs> I've got a song from OC Remix that's on my playlist too, and like... The problem is I don't know enough about what this actually is, but from my perspective, in the late 90s to early 2000s, definitely early 2000s because that's where I discovered it, this was a file-sharing website that would allow people to take, that would emphasize and showcase people that would um, take a video game song and remix it and then represent it into a different format and different file and, and totally different presentation. And and I don't want to say like not into just like a different like musical interpretation. It would be a, a very much like a different format design. And, and I think we'll probably see this it's, with jeans and you'll definitely see it with mine. Um, it's an incredible reimagining of it where it's you listen to the game music and you'd be like, oh, this is an orchestrated track. And then then you see an OC remix and like, this is now the jazz interpretation of this, or this is the rock interpretation of it. Yes. And it's done very well. And the website's been around for a long time. Forever. Their YouTube channel is fantastic mm -hmm. because when you look at the notes, it's like, oh, you see the remixer. For this instance, it's the Timaeus 222. Oh, it was reviewed by an OC staff person whose name is buried in this massive pile of information. Right, but what's also really cool is they definitely credit the original song. They um, have the original composers and everything too, which yes. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing they're doing due due diligence. Doing it's God's work, good. son. Totally. And the thing with OC Remix music is, I think for the most part, you're gonna find good shit. Oh, absolutely. So, you wanna play this? Yeah, absolutely. All right, roll that beautiful bean footage.
Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I was real nice. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the fact that the OC remixes, it's like you can hear, like, the the same... I'm not musically inclined to know what it's called, but it's like the same tone, the same little like bit of music from the original, mm-hmm. but it keeps getting replayed in different ways, just mm-hmm. as the original, where it's like you listen to the initial like entry, and it's like, that's kind of weird, and then it changes, and then it changes, so right. it's so different, but keeps so much of the same spirit, and it's just, it's super good. What's up next? I do some Golden Sun, dude. Sure. Golden Sun, Lost Is Age. Is like Golden Shower? Uh, yeah, totally the same. I mean, if you want you it to be, I suppose. On your face. Uh, yeah, Golden Sun, Lost Age. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, I think it was critically received as a hot piss mess. Oh, yeah. Now hold your horses. No, it wasn't quite as good as the first one. Oh, it was. It was. Mm, it was yeah, it was totally. I had not an enjoyable quite time okay. playing Golden Sun when I was a boy, a lad. Mm-hmm. So I got uh, all right, fellows. I think this is the same song in both games. So, do we listen to both or no? No. You li- it's just, but it, the song is in both games, but it's the same thing. I just put Golden Sun Lost Stage, though, because that's where it's more prevalent. Okay. Okay. But, oh, I gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Should we listen to the original before yes. we listen to Okay. So, this is the, the Ruins of Lemuria. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just take a quick listen Mar- to the original. What, what were the uh, the Golden Sun creatures' names? The the Jin. Jinny. Uh, there we Jin. go. The yeah. Jin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Fake Pokemon. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Fake Pokemon is correct. Right. Like a water Pokemon. Here we go. Fire Pokemon. Yeah. So that's the original from Golden Sun, The Lost Age, or possibly also the original Golden Sun. Uh, so what I've got here is uh, a post-rock interpretation of this. If you don't know what post-rock is, it's uh, kind of like experimental rock. It combines your standard rock and roll fare with electronic music. And they kind of use different textures and tempers and all of that kind of thing. To, so it's a darker sound in this one uh, to give you kind of an idea. Is post rock different from prog rock? Yes. Okay. What the hell is prog rock? Prog rock is a lot more technical. And the best music ever. Possibly. Yeah. Well. Wait, like pog isn't those pogs? Prog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Progressive. Yeah. Oh. Progressive metal is this music ever. Anyway. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> yes, mm, of course. Mm. Of course, indeed. Uh, so, yep, here we go.
little bit of the uh, little bit of the saxophone there at the end. It's good. It's very uh, chillax. Mm-hmm. Very ambient. For sure. Liked it. I'm glad. Good. Liked it. I might go on the fence of saying I might have, I might have liked the original better. Think so? Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I don't know. I think they're both great. I, I like I like the the guitar tones a lot. I like the but little extra the original... added depth from the from the cover. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I could see that, but I also like. I feel like the original just blends a little better together. Mm-hmm. But okay. I don't know, they're both great. I mean, I would not change the channel if either of them came on. <sighs> All right. Well, what I want to do right now is knock out uh, two here on my list. Hi oh. Uh, get this get this puppy on the road uh, by listening to a little uh, Mega Man. Yeah. Y'all may have heard of this game uh, at some point in your life, uh, and this I'm going to play. Manami, I'm gonna butcher the hell out of this. I am so sorry. Manami Matsume. Now that the soundtrack for Mega Man 2 was composed by Takashi or Tadashi with Mega Man composer Manami Matsume. So Manami is credited, but it appears like kind of the groundwork was set by Mr. Tatashi. Or Miss. Or Miss. From one of the things I've heard is uh, one of the best Capcom uh, sound composers is a lady. Uh, it's the one girl that the that the blood bore, blood stained, whatever they like, pulled a bunch of it to get. Or is that a different lady I'm thinking of? They brought her into blood. Stained. Yeah, yes, because she yeah. did like all the Castlevania music. Yeah. So, and I wish I knew her name and could speak more fluently about it. But um, the important thing that we're talking about right now is this is Mega Man Two and uh, the Fortress theme. Wily's Fortress. Do you have something to say, or do you want to? I mean, I can wait until later. Okay. Uh, so we we just listened to what Mega Man sounds like, and what we're gonna listen to right now is a really cool dude named Mega Ran, uh, and <laughs> he is like he's a, already awesome. He's a rap artist, uh, and he kind of does uh, some riffs on the Mega Man soundtracks, and he you know based on his name probably has more. Uh, music based on Mega Man soundtrack stuff. So I'm going to push these levers up. I'm and, very excited about this. And turn these levers down. Run. And we're going to listen to a little bit of Mega Man. One of the smartest in the world. Amazing advancements within the fields of robotics. Money was no object, but he never felt the need to make a profit with projects. Had a best friend, Dr. Light. They could have changed the world if they stayed together. Friendly competition during the bit of rivalry, and one day it changed forever. While he felt he'd done enough, but no matter how good he was, he was always runner up. Got sick of second place, felt like it was Wally's turn to start coming up. The school held a contest, the show of technology and chart our progress. Wally and Light collaborated, but like all the accolades, Wild Press, I guess. Wally had enough of that, started acting up, so we packed the stuff, and though his act was tough, we weren't buying it. That's how he became a mad scientist. Mike win some, but he just lost one. Like kept building, the boys got one. A table for one, just not fun, so he built a robot to call his son. Rock, named for his love for music. Lab assistant, who fetched his toolkit. Teenage boy, clumsy, clueless, but I'm... So, Mike Ran... Ah, that's really uh, good. You know, <laughs> that is very good. It's turn really it back good. on! <laughs> Fuck you, Griff! <laughs> no, and what's awesome Fuck about Griff, turn it back on. What about, what's, what's so good about Mike Ran's... Uh, uh, his music is is he he reestablishes a narrative for Mega Man, and as as you hear him doing his rap, uh, you hear the story of Mega Man reinterpreted through Mega Ran's you know lens, and it's really good, and it puts cool context in the situation, and and if you listen to many of Mega Man's music, like he does this for a lot of Mega Man songs and other music, and and. 
I don't know. It's it's a very nice uh, interpretation of a video game soundtrack that means something to somebody who then took it in, ingested it, and then said, this is my contribution to what I believe this is. So, yeah, fucking Mega Ran is fantastic. That is That was absolutely fantastic. That was super good. Good. Like... I mean, I feel like there's this underlying tone. It's like, oh, it's going to be a joke rap, like the Pokemon rap and all that. No, other kind of like, no this was this was very good. There are no jokes the in this podcast. Of a man that just just has to be a robot. No, it's very good. You nailed it, Grit. <laughs> um, speaking of which, we're going to then flip onto the other side of the, uh, the scenario and uh, listen to the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Mega Man 2 medley version of the Mega Man 2 theme song, uh, Hootenanny Hoedown. Uh, this is a long one. We're not going to listen to it all, but this is basically all of the Mega Man songs that are fantastic, reinterpreted and redesigned into one track. And here we go right now. <laughs> Oh, baby. Good That's some stuff. good stuff. Uh, yes. So, to jump in real quick, one of the composers for Mega Man 2 was Michiro Yamane, which also did a ton of the Castle- or Castlevania music. So, that's where I had my little uh, giddy moment earlier. Yes. Thank you for covering that, Gene. That's, that's good. Capcom has her as a... Which his, is independent now. She's no longer with Kevin. That's Hall. absolutely right. She, they did have her as a soundtrack composer, and she did a lot of great work. That's and, so good uh, music. Yeah, I, we should all appreciate that. Uh, speaking of which, let's move on to the next level of appreciation. Who is going now? Colin! Hi. Colin! So, I'll do this last one. All right. Ooh, it's uh, last one. I can't decide between the two, so I'll let you decide. Do you want to hear a more... Weird kind of electronic dealio. That's got my vote. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or do you want to hear a slower, more clarinetty piano y? Electronics. That one my has my vote. Fight. Right. Fight to the death. All right. We're going to fight here. Okay. Rock, paper, okay, what scissors. games are they? F- what are the rock, paper, scissors. Uh, one is from Lufia, and the other is from Final Fantasy VI. Oh, Ooh, interesting. Shit. Because I feel like it's the inverse where I'd be like, I want to be Final Fantasy VI. And Griff's going to be like, I'll take Lufia. All right, let's do this. Well, Final Gene, we'll VI play uh, Rock, Paper, one. Scissors on air, and then the winner will pick oh, the uh, song. All right. Now is it one, two, three, go? One, two, three, shoot. Okay. It's, no, it's not like when you say shoot will... and then go. It's one, two, three, and then you show. Right? One, two, three, and then you show. Okay, good. I will one, referee this one. One, two, three, and then you show. You don't show on three. You're not a monster. We're not fucking savages. Right. <laughs> right. We're okay. doing best out of three? This is civilized okay. rock, yes, paper, scissors. Best out of, three. Best out of three. Right. three. Ready for this. Okay. Two. Okay, wait. Ready? Oh, wait, wait. okay. All right. Huh? One, two, three, go. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay. Oh, we got one for Gary. One, Griff. two, three, go. One for Gene? One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. All right. Griff it is. Two for Griff. Okay. Yeah. So let's do some... That's the avalanche right there. Let's oh, do some fails. Lufia. <clears throat> uh, okay. Did he pick Lufia? Yeah. Oh. 
That, like, you wanted, I the, you wanted the clarinet. I chose the clarinet po- piano violin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. I actually called that? All all one gentleman. Oh. Oh, oh excellent. I like the... Oh, God. That's a very strange looking person. That's yeah. A, you should look I, out the video. What's the video? Well, who's this guy? Who is this, this guy? No, I think I've seen some, some tarps like that in, in <laughs> barns in Iowa here. Hey. Shut up, Griff, you horrible human being. <laughs> now, listen. Hold on a minute. Just before, wait. Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No pressure. You had plenty of time, but you're too busy watching us shake our rocks at each other. Okay, just kidding. Uh, it's just, it just says orchestral fantasy for his YouTube page. We'll tell you. I've watched a few. Uh, I've watched a few of the things he does, and it's there's a lot of really good shit actually. So uh, here we this go. This person has a Patreon. Uh, orchestral fantasy. So if you like this, oh. probably subscribe to that page. I would be very, very certain that you spell orchestral correctly before you start donating to it right you don't have like a, a clown donkey porn fantasy that's true that'll happen i mean all right let's we listen to this orchestral fantasy okay. here we go Gene looks like he has a comment. What, what What makes me look like I have many comments? The face you were making. It's... I did not expect Lufia to have not trash music. Because Lufia is a great game. It's got great background music. But listening to this person play with, on an, on a, in an orca- orchestrated way, it, it was better than Luf- what Lufia's I expected. Lufia's got great music. It sure does. Yeah. I, this I is the first time we've ever added Lufia to the list of random music. No, it's not. I mean, I've had Luffy on before. You have, yeah. I've had the fortune <laughs> to do music on. He just doesn't do it every time, after time, after time, after time, after time. I just time after time after time. When I think of great music, I don't think of Luffy. I don't agree. Think of- That's the thing. I don't. It's not a standout for me. Like I don't think of bad music. I just don't think it stands out. But that was that was this was one I wasn't looking for. I wasn't looking for Luffy music, but mm-hmm. I happened upon and I was like, oh. Oh, I, do li- I do like I do like Lufia, much, right? and I yeah. also like this. It's like that's a great song, and I think Lufia is a great background song. But listening to him play all these separate instruments, instruments all together, it, it really made it pop. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was good. I still would have rather had the other one. Well, fight to the death. You'll have to. Who's it's next? Both of our asses, Gene. Oh. Um, who knows? Gene, do you want to go next? Otherwise, I have a good segue into mine. Ooh, if you got a good segue, own it, baby. I do, because I really like this this YouTube scene of, like, I'm going to play multiple instruments and, like, then produce my own song that's, that's a uh, remix, but with different, like, real instruments, not, I don't want to say not just, but I want to say, like, not just putting them on a computer. You know, uh, I'm not synthesizing them. There are people who play multiple instruments and they then play them to record a song. And my song that I want to play is <laughs> that I have no connection to because I didn't do shit. Because I'm pick, not a sk- skilled musician. And you looked it up on the Internet. I found it on the Internet. Gone. What do we got, Griff? I got a little song from a little game called Persona 5. Oh. 
Uh, and you uh, have probably heard me play other songs from Persona 5 at this point in my life. Uh, because that game was really good. And you might be detecting a theme for my songs. And that's cool ass jazz. Uh, I like cool ass jazz. So I'm also not going to play the original song for this because this song is pretty much just a one to one translation of it from a I feel like jazz is like if you don't find good jazz it's terrible but when you find good jazz it's really good agree yes the, there's no middle jazz in this case I think this is big jazz and is this jazzy jazz or is this slow jazz this is jazzy jazz and much like the original song it is faithful however you're taking something that was spoken by a Japanese lyricist. Oh, I'm very excited. Oh, about this. no. Then translating Shh. it into an American person who is speaking the same words who the Japanese person was speaking. And it's very good. I feel like we don't need any more description. Just let the magic Yeah, happen. let's do it. Let's just do it. Oh, my God. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> That was really good. Ah, glad you guys like that one. I like the jazz, jazz man. I like the jazz. It's like a flashback to like Cowboy Bebop songs. It is, and I think that has influenced my appreciation of what is humans think is jazz. Um, and yeah, like I said, um, humans, not cats. Right, cats don't know music very well. That's true. But uh, this that this song jams. called "Jazz Cover" of "Last Surprise" uh, from Insane in the and the music in the music <laughs> <laughs> words featuring Adriasaurus, Brandon S, and Kyle A. Um, Just watch the video because the editing's great. Yeah. Great, they have fantastic introductions of those people. Yeah, so this this individual does a really good job. Much like the the previous one that I showcased, like they have several videos. They do a lot of great jobs with involving different people, different music, uh, different uh, instruments, different music musical styles, and uh, um, they have a, a wealth of 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 content so i would highly recommend listening to the uh the channel that belongs to insane in the rain insane in the rain insane in the rain okay uh but yeah it's it's very good uh, it, it looks to me like as if people were like doing their study sessions uh for collegiate um musical practice and then they had to record themselves actually 
proving that they're doing it. And they're like, what if we made music out of this? <laughs> so I really, I absolutely well, we love it. We spent years practicing right. all these saxophones. What if we actually made music? Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. And, and off the air, I was saying, like, this song is very much just Persona 5 Last Surprise, but sung by a... Uh, wafy white girl instead of a Japanese person who had, you know, a song written for them in English with a tenuous grasp of the English language. I think it fits better on the re on this. I do and I don't. I listen to them both back to back. They're both very good and I'm not going to play them. Um, but I think that Adriasaurus does an incredible job at interpreting it and does a good job of like pushing out that energy of of what that game was trying to go for. Uh, so highly recommend her channel too. You can look her up uh, under that crazy ass name um, <laughs> on YouTube. And she has got, she's got some cool other songs. Uh, so let me get out of here. Let me bail out. What's what's next. All right. So this is my second to last. It is another Castlevania. This one is the uh, song itself is from super Castlevania four. It's my second one from that particular game. This is the Dracula Battle. So this is the original. It'll be number five, section A. This is another rendition of actual of Simon's theme. Um, it's slowed down and kind of redone, but it's different enough for its own particular song. So to get an idea of what the remix or remaster is, let's listen to the original. <laughs> That's the original game music, and it is in itself a remaster of Simon's theme. That's the final boss music where you're walking up the final staircase to fight Dracula himself as he breaks out of his coffin to basically to murder you, fucking wreck everybody's day. That now, song was bonkers. It's really good. That is not what what console was that on? Uh, that's the uh, Super, Super Nintendo. Nintendo. Holy crap! I mean, there's there's four songs that I've played so far, and they're all renditions of Simon's theme, which is which is quite possibly the most underrated and amazing theme in Castlevania. Sure. So now the re-envisioning and remaster of that is going to be pretty starkly different. Mm. But it, it keeps on those tones of being like, th this song that this individual who based it off of Simon's theme or Dracula Battle, the final battle, the person who did this is the remix of Sam Diller. This is what I would imagine a, a big budget like blockbuster movie would have as like the heroes walking up that like set of stairs leading into the moon. Like I'm going to fight the the final bad guy, yeah. and it's just great. Hmm. All right, let's check it out.
Colin is uh, <clears throat> headbanging his head off. Over. All right. Hello. No, it's, I think they both do a fantastic job of setting that tone of like, this is this is where like you you fought through all this horrible crap. You're you're beaten. You're broken. But this is this is it. This is mm-hmm. this is the final step you need to take. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. both of those I think are fantastic. I would probably say that the console, like Super Castlevania 4 song, I, I love, love that song, but I really enjoy this rendition of it as well. That's very good. Both are very good. Oh, uh, and like, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the composers of both the Simon's theme and this are both Masanori Adachi and Taro Kudo. Colin? Yes. You wanted to go? Or no? If you, if you want to... We're, we're cresting uh, the end of the podcast. Yes. So should we... I have one more I have to do. Same. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one one out that I do really want to showcase, uh, but I've made my decision. Uh, so if, if you want to do the, the the Final Fantasy VI and render the rock paper scissors game completely pointless, then that's fine. No, no, I do not. Oh. I want to showcase my one thing. I'm just saying, like, you do roll it. that beam like, music. Let's do it. You go. Okay. Oh, Bill. Well, I mean, we can all. Do one yeah. more. But, I mean, you just, you like, have your thing that it is a must do. Then let's do it. All right, this is my must do. Must do. Okay, we're All gonna right. end up playing that Final Fantasy VI because I need to fucking know what it is. Here's the situation. I see Link. It's <laughs> it's two thousand and two. Uh-huh. All you right, just, you just dialed into your browser. Right. You heard that? Horrible I'm enjoying noise, my right? like new grounds like page half loading. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. yeah. You, you you've got your ASCII porn of Captain Janeway right up on the side. <laughs> well, hang yeah. on, Captain yeah. Janeway, Cisco, seven of nine. All right, well, that's fair enough. Too. Both equally valid. Um, and you just hit up Napster for what are the next best songs to listen to. Because I'm not scared of what we're going to hear now. You're going to then set this this thing up overnight to download your pot or your podcast, your music, <laughs> because your 56k modem can only pull down so much because your ping ratio is only this degree. And what you find is not just Britney Spears having sex, but Ooh. what you find is this hidden gem called S O. A ah uh, dash yeah Zelda got it oh, well. and you hear a song and you think breast ice what the Brace fuck yourself. did I just listen this, to this had to be on the podcast yeah and we're gonna listen to this yep because this is iconic please don't sue us. <laughs> So, holy shit. This is a song of a generation. Yeah. And that generation is fucked up. A generation <laughs> that thought that music was free. Thanks, Bono. And <laughs> I don't forget James Hetfield. This song shit. was attributed to System of a Down mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, it was thought that somehow System of a Down or maybe Weird Al Yankovic did some weird interpretation of. Um, the music that came from any Zelda song. So again, this is another one that I'm not going to juxtapose against the original music because it literally could be any Zelda oh, song. From yeah, any it's Zelda. a standalone. So this actually is not System of a Down. This song was uh, sung and created by a man named Joel Pleeman. P-L-E-I-M-A-N. 
and uh, he um, put his music out there. And for some reason, in the uh, in the late '90s to early 2000s, uh, his song was captured into that magical structure called Napster or file sh- music file sharing services as Zelda Dash S O A D. He System of Down was very big then, and he kind of sounds like he Surge. Kinda sounds like him. So, and this song comes from an album from 1998 called Rabbit Joint, which is from the band of the same name, Rabbit Joint. Great, <laughs> so, yeah. great band. Yep, I'm sure. Solid. <laughs> and that's really all there is to say about this, except for this man did this song, whose name is um, etched in the pillars of history for Joel. Yeah, Plyman. Joel Plyman. And not the internet. Yeah. So it's somebody else. Who's up next? Um, I mean, is this last last song, or do we have another last one? Song. last song? All right. Well, um, I will. Uh, I'll be happy to do it. So this is the only non-Castlevania song that I'll play. Oh, wow. We don't need to play the original because the original is frankly kind of terrible. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's Aerith's Aerith's or Aerith's theme from Final Fantasy VII. And it's done by uh, a previous entry, uh, the Laura 6683. I think she does an absolutely fantastic job of playing this song. She's and, real nice. And it's it's just great. I feel like it's it's done better by her than the original. The original has a great... It's, it's great, it's good, but this, I think, is fantastic. Do you think Final Fantasy VII remake, remake will have a better song than what she produces tonight? Uh, I don't have much faith in the remakes. Remake. Okay. Oh, come on. All right, yeah, let's do it. Iconic song. I'll wait. Shut up. <laughs> so I don't know. That was I, really good. I think it's one of those songs that it just sounds better on piano. The original composer, mm-hmm. which I was trying to say before, but I just zoned out, is Nobu Umatsu. Umatsu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's. I think that's a very iconic song. I think it sounds so much better on the piano. And yeah, that's that. Solid. And once again, she does great work. Fantastic. Like, mm-hmm. she does pretty much... All of her stuff's really good. Mm-hmm. Like, any game you can think of, she's probably pian- pianist. Some song of it. Nail it. For P- sure. Pianized? Pian- Call on your one us out of here. All right. Here, here it is, Gene. Final Fantasy VI. Yay! Devil's Lab. Uh, we'll listen to the original real quick. This is what plays when you're in the Magitech Research Facility in the World of Balance. What's a Magitech? It's a Pokemon. So like a magic suppository. I don't think that's true.
<laughs> forgot this damn song exists. Yeah. That's fantastic. I didn't. I think this song is kind of boring, so I'm excited to hear what... Let's add weird noises and electronics to it. Grip, Fuck yeah. You could eat a dick. All right, well, I think it's kind of tedious. You're tedious. I mm-hmm. think it's a great background music. Like hammer to the, the hammer to the anvil, like the tink. But anyways, what's, what's, what is this magical bean? a lot different. I got comments from both sides about how it resembles perhaps Earthbound. Earthbound oh, yeah. It, it, quote, resembles Earthbound. Ma- maybe. Maybe heavily influenced. <laughs> if Earthbound is remastered, this song will appear in it. But, but it's great. Like, it's, yeah, really, it's not it's bad. bad. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's like but somebody, it's fucking Earthbound. Somebody took, somebody took the cassette tape that was that song and then poured a bunch of coffee and, <laughs> and student debt. And student debt mm-hmm. and and um, uh, ecto coolers from the nineties into <laughs> it. in there. <laughs> Hello, here we go. And now we found this fucking cool ass funk. It was really good. It was I good. like it was this good. a lot. Yeah, but like totally, totally fucking earthbound. Yeah, it's very happy. I mean, surprise! Yay! You're an earthbound. I like earthbound. Mm-hmm. I right. want. I want to be an earthbound. So have we that, uh, uh, have it, we breached eight hours yet? Uh, <laughs> no, we're close, um, and I think that we've done a good job in talking about uh, reinterpretations and remixes of existing video game songs, and really showcasing stuff that's out there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to all of them. Thank um, God. But I think what the most important thing is is we had a lot of different areas with a lot of different sounds. Yeah, go listen to some of these soundtracks and go listen to some of these remixers because, as a person who is thirty something at this point <clears throat> and grew up with listening to video game music and video game soundtracks, remixes of said soundtracks are cool as shit. Absolutely, and they take it in different directions. They take it in different soundscapes. If you like a certain style and a different style, you can find it in in this realm. And Absolutely, I, I hope mean, we exposed you everybody to it. Something easy to think of, like like the the OC Overclock Remix, is a great place to start to really expand because they do any type of genre, any type of game, everything. Like some of the games that I share on my list, I think one of them was like OC Remix because they they number every one they do, mm-hmm. and one of them was put on YouTube in like 2014. And it was like OC Remix 3,642. Like, there's a shitload of them out there. Go listen to OC Remix 996, uh, the one that I was going to do on this episode, which is called Star Fox Godspeed BGM Corneria The Wingless. It's very good. I might need to check that out. I like that there are other sweaty nerds in their mid-30s. That are, uh, <laughs> that are that have the, the passion and, and willing to put forth the time to to create some of these things. Or they did 15 years ago when they actually had aspirations. Ah, yeah. ah. dead dreams. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love the fact, and I I think it's probably most notable when I'm looking at my playlist is that it's it's like I look at the music from the original game that I played and really enjoyed as a kid and watch what grew from that, and it's mm-hmm. amazing to imagine that. 
I that agree. is a tiny fraction of what people have created out there. Not all of it's good. I mean, I'm going to throw that out there, but there's some amazing things out there. So There are. And speaking of which, next time we do this, we're going to... I'm heading this off right now. We're going to do the <laughs> topic of driving. Wow, just didn't do, do, even do, consult do, do, driving. The, didn't even consult the group. Oh, you mean drive you didn't, wow. Tona, drive, I mean, driving, you're not just going to like randomly ask me. I'm like, uh, 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 penises. No, because we're doing driving. <laughs> it's day Daytona. Daytona. Yes, it's Let's gonna be Daytona. Can all five of each of our selections be Daytona? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Nope. What if we driving. didn't? No. Let's go away. Let's go away. And we're going away. Thank you for listening. This has been uh, Boss Barrel Radio. I am Griffin Hoffman. With me has been Gene Sefer Jr. Hello. And Colin Connor. Hi. Bye. Thank you for killing it tonight, gentlemen. Music. Mark Good job. Drop.